Then in a week, we are, so then we have like a week, we're gonna meet with the attorneys. We've done the depositions, we've done everything. We're gonna meet with the attorneys and finalize everything. So in the last video, you guys saw um, how we met to kind of get to know us on how, our, how we met and all that jazz. So now we are going to finish it off with I think they're going to notice when we're in the same place, same day. That's okay, it's a different times. Okay. Okay. Um, so, of which, what are we doing now? Is it going to be... So this is after we started dating and then leading up to... So we met in... July 2008. July 2008. 2008. He proposed New Year's, New Year's Eve. Eve. We should talk about the proposal. We should go for it. Go for it. Yeah, I think you should talk about the proposal. Okay, so I was wondering if he would propose, but it was so, everything was happening so quick. I mean, we had just met in July. And so um, I think it was uh, November. I was looking at rings for him. And it was just so, everything was like lightning fast, lightning fast. And so I was like, is he going to propose? It just, but everything just felt really, really right. And so then he, we went to. Oh, we missed this step. What step? I'm not home. Um, no, I know, I figured it was going to Okay. Um, I, he was asking, see, like when we were together, when we first got together, we were together for like two weeks. And then he said, you know what? I don't feel like this is right. I feel like God's telling me I shouldn't be with you anymore. And I was right. like, I was like, okay, that's fine. No big deal. And so then we stopped talking and then he came back around and then he was like, er, I don't think God wants me to be with you anymore. And now I'm like, now you're pissing me off because you're wasting my time. And so then we stayed away for a while and then a couple weeks later he started creeping back in and I was like, uh, 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 no, 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 you're not wasting my time. And then like it just slowly started feeling right again and we fell back into it. And boom, from that point, I think it was September. So we met in July and it was like on and off, August, I'm sorry, it was on and off until um, for a couple of weeks, August until like I think the beginning of I mean, the beginning of July, the end of August, end, end of That's August, kind of, yeah. and then from like the end of August till like he proposed New Year's, it was like lightning fast, which I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't recommend, recommend that. <laughs> We're not saying that. I mean, it worked for us, but we wouldn't say that's typical. And then um, he took me to a, on like a little starlight cruise for the evening for New Year's on this like like cruise ship, which was really cool. And it was exciting, and then he got up. You do the end proposal story. Um, so I was nervous, by the way, like me too, freaking out, nervous, and uh, like we kept running to the time. bathroom, nervous. But um, I, the hardest thing was hiding the ring from you. Wow. Like it was weird. But um, I had talked to the DJ and asked him um, if he could play a particular song. A little bit before New Year's, and I explained to him that I was going to propose. Do you remember the song? Casey and JoJo, All My Life. Okay, good. So, uh, we like a little R&B. Yes, and then I, I sang it. No. Well, not in the mic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After you proposed. I kind of have a mic. But I, I, we, I proposed to her, and then they played that song, and then we danced as they were playing that song a little before, like 10 minutes before New Year's. It's the ring. See, I had picked out a ring that I had liked that my mom and I, we had gone and got a ring and this one jeweler was going out of business so everything was getting liquidated and I found this ring that I loved. I thought it was so beautiful. When I was picking it out, I was like, okay, yes, that one. Um, I walked over and I saw this other ring and I was like, oh, can I just please put it on? And the lady's like, sure. And I put it on and I could not even... <clears throat> I, I just, it was so beautiful, so sparkly, and I was like, ugh. All right, and I handed it back to her. I was like, fine, I, I'll never get this thing. And so when you proposed and you pulled that ring out, I was like, it was that ring, and I'm like, oh, okay. my life. And it, he proposed New Year's, and we were married. With someone like you. March 14th, 2009. Super fast. So uh, less than a year later, we were married. And it goes so crazy, so fast. Like I said, we wouldn't necessarily, we would not recommend that to anybody, but it just happened. Especially if you have already have kids, I don't recommend that at all, you know. But you know, hindsight's 2020, and you learn, and you wish you could have done things differently, but praise God, we worked out. But because we moved so fast, we had a lot of difficulties. difficulties. One of which, leading up to our getting married, we were getting married in March. 
she lost her job mm -hmm. February in, in February. They basically closed that department or they, whatever. They were, it was when the economy was going down and they just let Downsizing. so many people go. And I think they realized they had done it a couple times before and they saved me. I think it's because I was a single mama. But I think when they realized, okay, she's getting married, she's going to be she's gonna have some support they knew that they would be able to let me go so they let me go and that was <coughs> a, a, that. a really hard hit to my ego and that just all of my plans were just shattered because I was like we're gonna have two incomes we're gonna be stable I had all of these ideas of how things were gonna go and then BAM but I knew I had wanted to be a stay-at-home mom at some point but Drew at that point was going into BPK he was three and he was going into BPK so I was like all right, and you said, well, maybe this is your time. Yeah, because she she had been uh, working I was getting, hard. I, I was, and I was for getting. A long time. There were many, many times where I was like, "Is this it? I don't want to work here forever." Um. So I was like, okay, and then I was kind of on the fence if I wanted any more kids because Drew was already growing up. I was like, I don't know if I want any more. I mean, he's already going to be four, starting all over again. And so I told him, I said, "You have one." month to try buddy one month and it worked the first try it did so that's Liam. Liam so we were married in March and then knew we were pregnant in July July mm -hmm. so we conceived in June and, and then he was born in the next March, March. But I think, um, and then we also, we moved. I was living in my little villa and we got a little townhouse and we moved. And so, um, I, me losing my job, getting pregnant, moving. My other kids um, had to move schools, which I was really sad about. I tried really hard to keep them in their school. I was just gonna drive them there. They weren't able to keep them there because we moved districts. And then I think like, I think the reality of everything just, you know, having another baby, everything happening so fast and losing my job and, you know, I think everything was such a whirlwind and mm -hmm. also my other, my other marriage was very, it was not like a marriage at all and I won't get into detail about that just out of respect for them and my kids. Um, it wasn't like a marriage at all. I was, all, I've always been, I might have been legally married but I've always been a single mom. So, um, uh, I think I had different, I had always been kind of running the show and doing what I need to do, how I need to do it, when I need to do it, and I don't ask anybody. And then I met this guy, and he is a more traditional person, and that was definitely a learning curve for me. I had to learn to, like, let him help me and, you know, be a husband. I had no idea. I did not grow up with a man in my life, never had a dad around me. Um... So he was the first person I had ever met that was like a real good role model for marriage and husband and, and dad and everything, which was hard for me because I come from a very independent mother and if you want something done, you get it done yourself and you don't ask people for help and you're a go-getter. And I'm fine with that, but it definitely was hard for me to um, fall into adjust. this, adjust to everything. And, and well, at the, I think at the same time too, I... I I came in with expectations of certain things and I didn't really, uh, I was immature for sure and I didn't, um, I don't know, I didn't really know what marriage was. I knew what I thought it could be and I knew that the, the, the Hollywood version of how, you know, a, a perfect romance could be and what that was like, kind of the almost, I don't want to say fairy tale, but kind of the, you know, all the good about what a marriage could be and I came in expecting all of those things and it was really um and then also becoming a parent right off the bat of two kids yeah and I had my way of doing things and they weren't necessarily the best way um but when I was a single mom I mean the kids we woke up at six o'clock we mm -hmm. got up got dressed ate breakfast dropped off kids at daycare went to work picked them up ate baths cleaned up, homework, and bed. There was no, there wasn't much time. It was a very fast paced life. And I was fine with that. I liked it. But um, when things started slowing down, you know, it was definitely hard. We had a lot of our battle, battles were with the kids because I wanted it my way. And he was like, that's not the best way. And it was just the way I was comfortable. So it was definitely an adjustment for both of us. 
but because of all of that and then all of the children <coughs> and now we're pregnant it completely cracked i think by yeah. by i was 18 weeks pregnant so we yeah so july so then september we were separated october it was october that was October. Yeah, it was October because I remember we were going to... You were better at dates. It was October. So in October, we separated. I was 18 weeks pregnant. And... Um, so she she stayed at the... The townhouse. Townhouse. And you moved I went back and lived with my parents. His parents. And then with your friend for a while. Yeah, I was just kind of... Kind of going back and forth. And we just split. We split. It was to the point where... Quite honestly, we couldn't even really talk to each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it got it got bad very quickly. Very, very quickly. It was really hard. A lot of emotion, and I wasn't thinking clearly all the hormones and life changes. And um, I think what also had really um, amplified it all was um, I was taking uh, an anti-anxiety, anti-depression, like a Zoloft, when I was a single mom because I was going through everything with my ex. And so I just stopped that really fast when I found out I was pregnant. I think I stopped it in all of two weeks. And I felt okay, like I didn't feel dizzy or anything, so I figured I was fine. But I think that had a lot to do with it. I did not handle things very well. Now looking back, I realize that wasn't a smart move. But um, I think that definitely um, really added to it. So we split and we tried to talk here and there, but it was just such a disconnect such a disconnect it did not work very well and then um i was like okay well i'm gonna go to counseling so i started up counseling and the first two times we went <coughs> i think both of us were like this is, this is not helping this is not helping neither one pointless. of us is, yeah and so i continued to still go which i'm so thankful i chose to do that unbeknownst to me yeah i was so like we, i'm just gonna go yeah we agreed that when we went together it just didn't seem beneficial and we were like well this is you know we, we can't really afford to be paying for this anyway and if it's not helping then whatever so we stopped and then she kept going i decided to go ahead and keep going i just felt like the lord told me just to keep on going and i love my counselor then and um, she helped me work through some of the stuff i had been going through personally um, within myself as well as in the marriage and that was so so helpful and so she was teaching me how to pray for him, even though I wasn't feeling a lot of love for him at that time. She was thinking, teaching me how to be thankful. I mean, she was just so, 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 so good. And I continued to do that. And then it was New Year's, New Year's. Um, I think you sent me the message, like we were talking back and forth. It wasn't good. And then you're like, you know, I just don't think this is working very much well. I don't think we can do this anymore. I think we should probably just end it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is happening. I told you I didn't want to do anything. Let's just see how it goes. That was my thing. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't want to get a divorce, but I didn't necessarily want to stay married. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just didn't want to do anything. And I was, I just was tired of the back and the forth. pain and the back and forth. And, the, and we had a new baby. Know, her, yeah, we and we had a baby, baby coming. coming. Yeah. It was so bad. And so then I think by January, the papers started getting uh, drawn up, and we spent, I think it was $20,000 in attorneys. So this is essentially what happened. We, we you know, um, out of fear. Of what's going to happen to the of baby. Of what could happen or what I thought could happen, you know, not really knowing. Yeah. Um, I, I was not a fan of or did not plan or want to be um, an every other weekend dad. And uh, obviously with a newborn and the fact that she, I knew that she, she breastfed, that it was, I wasn't really, I didn't know how that was going to go. And I went and talked to an attorney just as like an initial consultation and was like, hey, look, what do I do? Because I don't want to just visit my son, you know, every other weekend or once a week especially in the beginning of their life. I, I think the first five years, the, the developmental stage and the relational stage between parents and a child are extremely important. So I, I was, you know, I, I was like, well, what, what should I do? So then I, I talked to an attorney and obviously attorneys, not all of them, but some of them are really good at uh, spending money that you don't have. Uh, so we ended up spending 21000 between the two of us. Between the two of us. Uh, which 
at that point, I think I had gotten parent, help from my parents and my parents were saying, paying. My parents were paying for some of mine. What am I talking about? They paid for a lot of it, and then your parents put a second mortgage on their house for yours. Yeah. Because we didn't have the money, and yeah. both of our parents were scared for us. They were trying to protect us. And Everybody protect was grandson. in like fear. Like yeah. it was just fear was feeding this whole thing. My attorney was like, he's a he's a. a well, we call it a Bible thumper, and he is trying to control you and manipulate you, and he's going to do the same with your baby. We're going to get him in here. We're going to do depositions. We're going to get him. And I was like, okay. I didn't know what I was doing. And yours was like, you're going to get your baby seven days on. Whether she likes it or not, she'll have to pump. And it was just crazy. So he and I were like, so from 18 weeks of the pregnancy <coughs> to... The day I gave birth to him, sorry, the day I gave birth to him, we were doing this. I went, we fought back and forth, but in the meantime, I'm still, the sun's in my face, I'm still going to counseling, regardless, I'm still going to counseling, sorry about that, and trying to seek the best thing and seek God, and so then, like, I remember I'm in labor, and I can, like, I had gone that morning, and she had stripped, she noticed, like, okay, I think this is about to happen, she stripped me out, and then, like, the labor started, 11, 15, 11, 16, and I was having a contraction every, you know, very consistently, I had to go to the attorney's office, sign the final papers, because in two weeks, we were meeting with the, meeting with the judge to finalize everything, and, um, it was a lot of back and forth, and so, then I remember calling, somebody and I was like I just want this none of this is feeling right to me I just want my husband like I don't know what we are doing I don't know how I even got to this place nothing feels right and she was like don't call him don't call him and so as I was actually in labor with Liam I laid in my delivery bed weeping the entire labor and delivery um, just beside myself and crying because I just wanted my husband. I could not understand how I let it go so far. And I mean, it just went so wicked so quick. And I just cried. I just weeped. I mean, to the point to where the nurse that was helping me was like, she made everyone get out because she thought they were upsetting me. And I'm like, no, I'm just devastated that this is happening. So I dried up my tears for a moment, pushed my baby out. And I look at him. I'm like, oh my gosh, she looks just like you. It looks just like Chris. I'm like, oh my gosh. And so we didn't even, how awful of us, because we were all in that fear state. We didn't call. My mom finally called you the next day to tell, tell you he was born. The next evening. Yeah, the next evening, and which was so wrong. And um, then that was, so he was born on a Thursday. You came Saturday night? Saturday. Saturday come, yeah, they told me Friday night, so then I came Saturday. Saturday, because I was home by this point. It might have been Sunday. I think you didn't get home till Sunday. I think it was Sunday. Yeah. And then he came, and I remember seeing him, and we will, I have pictures of you with him. I'll insert some of those pictures. Um, but I just knew, like, when I saw him, and I saw, I mean, I just knew, like, this is wrong. This whole thing is wrong, and I don't know what to do. I I felt like it had gone way too far. I had known that we had let our parents and the attorneys drive the whole thing, and we were just, I didn't know how to bring it back at this point. Yeah, and at this point, we were now, I think, about a week away from signing uh, signing papers and finalizing everything. Yes, so, and then... In the, in the next video, we will... Well, we'll finish this, and then we'll, we'll talk about our reconciliation story. Okay. I thought that was it. Well, right now we're in the divorce story. I know. I'm trying to give him a cliffhanger. Oh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. So, yeah, and then... and then um, You can edit that out. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah. So, and then in a week, we are... So, then we have like a week. We're going to meet with the attorneys. We've done the depositions. We've done everything. We're going to meet with the attorneys and finalize everything. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Get to know me. <laughs> And the next video, you will see what happens. You will hear an amazing story of how God completely changed our lives. God changed our lives forever. Ever. And here we are today. Yeah.
So make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next one. No. I have a cold sore. I know. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope um, it, you know, encouraged you and motivated you. I hope it inspires you. And in the next video, we will be doing our reconciliation story. I will also have a playlist, a get to know me playlist. I will link that below in the description box so you'll be able to watch these videos. Um, in succession. Yeah. I will see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to subscribe if you have a story goes, little hope of bigger dreams. Down singing louder than the crowd